Hello guys, uh, my name is Evans and uh, welcome to this uh, video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue to look at the Information Technology 9626 um, Specimen Paper 2. In the last video, we ended with step number 16 and in this video, we continue with step number 17. Okay, so step 17, the scenario is that the data manager would prefer another solution to that shown in steps 13 and 14. Uh, the new solution is to use a single data file. Okay, so step 17 says create a word process document for the data manager of no more than 400 words to A. Explain how the new solution would work. Okay, and um, B. Compare and contrast the new solution to your solution in steps 13 and 14. And C. Evaluate a suggestion that named ranges could be used within this formula. Okay, so what we're going to do is to um, uh, work through step by step and um, we'll start with step number A um, so we are to open um, a word a process document and um, we're going to type out something of no more than 400 words okay all right so let's go back to the question now so the question says um, we explain the new solution um, how it would work okay so the first part is to understand which is um, the solution that is found in step 13 and step 14 so remember in step 13 and step 14 we actually used a lookup function to retrieve um, the values um, of um, um, the faculty as well as um, the qualification so now we need to um, find another solution um, which uses a single data file okay so this is the proposed solution actually that instead of using um, separate files um, as used in step 13 and 14 we're supposed to use a single data file now the question asks us how are we supposed to use a single data file when we have multiple uh, files okay so this is just uh, what the question is asking us to do okay so, so we're going to type out so the first thing that you're going to do is to um, to create a single worksheet or a single workbook okay and um, then in that workbook probably you open um, a workbook like um, the course workbook okay um, let's go back to the uh, workbook that we were working on last time okay so you open this workbook and then you're going to import um, the other work, work workbooks or the other um, CSV files that um, you were uh, importing some information from using your VLOOKUPs okay so um, Basically, this is what you're going to do. So you you create a, a single file, and then you import the, those separate files into that file that you would have created, so that you have all um, the um, the the CSV files in a single um, in a single Excel workbook. Okay, so you have them as separate worksheets. I'll show you just in a moment how you can do this. But first of all, let's type out the solution to this one. Okay, so for part a so step 17 and part a we're going to type out there so first create a single or create a workbook a single workbook not a single workbook <laughs> just say create a workbook okay okay so create a workbook and then import the separate um, CSV files so the, um, you can even put in brackets something like um, the faculty file um, the one that we we somebody somebody wants to spell faculty okay the faculty file and um, the qualification file okay all these you can import them into um, you can import them into your um, workbook that you've created okay so in our case we could have um, the workbook in our case could be the course maybe the course file okay could be the course file and we import these two files inside the course file okay so um, this first part will give you uh, one mark and this last part will give you one mark and you should have your two marks um, there okay so next thing um, we look at is um, 
a demonstration of the same so uh, assume I have a single file that I've created here and I want to import the other two files the faculty file as well as um, the qualification file okay so go to um, to data and from data go to um, um, import from text so this is get external data so from text and then you browse to the location where your files are saved so mine are saved um, in this folder um, so you import let's start with the faculty file and import it so you go through if you've worked um, in access you, you you you're familiar with how to import a csv file into your database um, this shouldn't be something that is strange so mark my data has headers i like to work with windows um, formatting here um, so go to next and then um, the delimiter is actually this the character that um, separates one field from the other in your csv file so you must make sure that you know the delimiter that's why you were asked first of all to examine the files and the contents of the file you can also have a preview of the data here and you can see that the delimiter in this file is actually a comma so a comma is separating one field or one column uh, from the other so that shouldn't really be so change the delimiter from tab uh, change it to comma okay and notice that the moment you change the delimiter to comma um, 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 excel draws a line between the um, the column to show you that they are actually going to be unique fields okay right so if you do not have um, your delimiter listed here um, then you can specify it um, here okay so if you say it other uh, for example let's say it's on tab and then we say it's other if you put a comma here you expect Excel to pick up this and um, put um, um, a boundary as your delimiter so that shouldn't be strange so I'll leave it at comma and go to next and then at this stage you're supposed to specify um, the data format for your column okay so um, if you had special characters here I mean you could specify something like text as you can see this is text text so um, um, if you leave it at um, general the implication is that it converts numeric values to numbers as well as dates to dates and all remaining values to text so this one is general and you are saying um, to excel that um, you can de de detect or pick up the data type that you feel um, if you go through the um, the individual cells or the individual values um, in each row um, or in each column um, whatever value you pick up if you notice there's a unique data type pick up that data type and use it so that's what general does so if there are numbers it will pick up those numbers and use the data type as number if there's a date involved they need to pick up the um, the that column and convert it to date data type okay so this is um, um, the good part about the general feature okay so at this stage I'll leave it to general and I'll say finish notice then you get to this um, this uh, part of um, the worksheet okay or part of the import data section so what you need to do here is to, you want to import it as a new um, worksheet okay uh, don't import it on the existing worksheet okay please import it as a new worksheet because it's going to be added at the bottom here as a separate um, sheet okay so say okay and notice that Excel actually imports that and adds it here so you can go ahead and rename this um, this is the faculty uh, file so you can go ahead and rename it as faculty um, sheet okay and then you can use it so you do the same for qualification and any other file that you may want to import and notice that when you have this then you have everything in a single file so this um, this you don't have to look up um, the values from another table or rather from another file instead you'll be looking up from the same single file okay so since I don't need this I'm going to delete this uh, I was just trying to explain um, explain um, uh, to you so that you have a better understanding of the step that we've done in 17a all right let's go to part B of um, the question so part B says compare and contrast the new solution to your solution in steps 13 and 14 okay so what we need to do here is actually we want to to look at examine the new solution and then we're going to find out 
um, uh, some advantages or we're going to write some advantages and disadvantages um, of the new solution remember the new solution is to create a single file and import all other dependent files into that single file okay so what's the benefit of doing this what's the what's the drawback of doing this and this is what we want to examine in step 17 part b okay so as usual you have three marks there so that means that um, when you give your answers you should give at least three um, three valid points for you to get full marks on this on this question right let's go back to our work so um, what we're going to do is to write um, something so let's start with first of all maybe the um, I don't know if we start with the drawbacks <laughs> okay so let's start with the drawbacks that is the um, disadvantages of having um, this kind of arrangement so the drawbacks are that um, let's say this is going to be part B okay so the drawbacks um, the drawbacks are okay mm-hmm so we have the drawbacks and then we have got the benefits okay so I don't know whether I'm supposed to type them as bullets or what but whatever <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter um, as long as we write something sensible okay so the disadvantages of having um, um, a single all files important to a single file is that um, you cannot have um, this file opened at the same time uh, by multiple people for example it will be showing to them that uh, the file has actually been opened by somebody so you can only maybe read the information and not write to it so the file is um, opened let's say in a read only format and you cannot modify any element or any column or data in that file um, because of this uh, feature so we can say the file the single file will be opened um, in a single um, in a single uh, not in a single will be opened in a read only um, read only mode and um, read only mode hence it cannot be edited or used by multiple people okay multiple people at the same time or simultaneously okay yeah uh, you guys probably you've tried to open a file on um, on um, maybe on a on a public share um, on your on your school network and you've noticed maybe if, so, if somebody is open the same file um, you do not have access to modify any element in that file and this is the same thing that happens okay so some of you've got um, your computers shared in your homes and um, try once um, opening maybe a file uh, from a shared network at home uh, open it from dad's computer and open it again from mom's computer or your computer notice that uh, one of you will have the privilege to write to that file and read it but the rest of you will only read uh, from that file okay um, there are not many drawbacks uh, for this kind of arrangement but we have a number of benefits uh, for uh, the same so what we're going to do is to write some of the benefits actually for um, having a file um, that is um, or those files imported into a single file so the first thing is that uh, because um, um, the links in this file will be um, internal which means we are not referring to any data outside what we have in this workbook okay so the links will be internal um, hence they will not be broken when we copy um, rename um, the file okay so whenever we play around with um, with this file the links will not be broken um, but if we had them at separate uh, what happens if we change one files location um, then we'll have to update in the link that the file um, has changed location uh, but in this case because you have them all in one workbook but separate worksheets uh, rather sheets then that is going to be 
um, a plus because whatever you copy that file it goes together with these um, um, sheets that were imported okay so the other thing is that um, it is relatively easy to copy or backup okay it is relatively easy to copy or backup um, and send um, this file to um, other locations because it has it has no dependencies okay no dependencies so what this means is that um, um, if you for example if you um, if you um, if you copy a file which has got um, which is separate um, and you copy to a different location what you need to do is also to copy the, the file that are dependent on on or, or the links that are dependent on the other files so you need to copy all those files in one folder it reminds me of what you do uh, or what you used to do um, when you did web authoring um, in the IGCSC remember that you would create a folder where all your HTML and uh, your web page files would go uh, if you tried to put um, let's say some picture um, outside where the um, your um, your web pages are you needed to specifically give them uh, an absolute um, 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 file path for you to have access to those pictures but if you um, if you put them um, in one folder then you can use the relative file path uh, or the relative referencing so that you can access them in the same folder just by calling them their by their names but if they are in separate folders then you have to specifically specify the um, the absolute file path uh, so that you can have access to those um, to those files okay so that's what you should um, you should you should know okay so Okay, so I have done I think um, three points that I've listed here. I think they are enough. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to exhaust so much time on this video. There, remember, there is the other section that we have to do. Um, I've been so busy of of late, and I've not even had the chance um, to come back to um, to these these videos since I did the last time. Um, so uh, we got to step number or part C of step number seventeen. So part C says evaluate a suggestion that named ranges could be used within these formulas. Okay. So uh, where are we? Oh, we are here. Okay. So the question says evaluate a suggestion that we could use named range in these formulas. Now, notice that um, named ranges could be used for both um, um, files that are separate. And files that have been imported um, in a single workbook. I know uh, Cambridge would tell you um, the Cambridge Mark scheme for this paper would tell you that um, um, you cannot use named ranges um, when you have multiple worksheets. Okay, but that, that's not entirely true. Um, I mean, you you can import um, or you can import values or look up values from a worksheet which is in another file, so to say. Okay, this is what you've been doing at IGCSE. I mean, so it's not something that is strange. So I disagree with um, the Cambridge Mark scheme that says that um, you cannot um, use um, you cannot use um, um, named ranges um, um, in separate when you have separate um, uh, separate sheets. Okay, um, but and you just have to have um, I mean a single uh, workbook. Um, that's not true. And um, we can we can prove this. Um, uh, for example, let me just show you this, so that um, you know. Sometimes some of these things, the um, the people who prepare some of these papers, they are human beings as well. And some of the things, um, no one is an expert, or no one is is um, what can I say? No one is. No one knows it all. <laughs> yeah, no one knows it all. So. Um, I was actually surprised when I read this part in the Mark scheme that said that um, you cannot. I was like, my God, you cannot say that. Because <laughs> some people at IGCC, they kind of use this file separately. So let me try to open some file of some kind, uh, maybe that I can use. Let me see. Um, 
um, now I don't know what file I'm going to look out for let's see where can I find some file that I can demonstrate on let's see intuitions um, I think let's go in the IGCSC there should be something here worksheets um, data analysis okay yeah let's do something let's open maybe these two files um, let's open them and let's see so I've opened two separate files or two separate um, um, uh, worksheets now wh what I want to do is to look up some value from one worksheet and import it into the other but I'm going to use a named range and this is where I was saying uh, I disagree with um, the, the the mark scheme because it's possible to use a named range when you have separate worksheets okay um, if you are a teacher and you are watching this um, I encourage you to experiment on this before you can tell your students that it cannot be done um, it's good as a teacher to research before you give information to um, to your student. Otherwise, they'll come back to you and say, sir, you said this. <laughs> okay, so um, let's try to experiment on this one and see if um, it's not possible to use a named range um, to import um, or to look up a value. Okay, so I'm going to create a named range um, in this um, in this. Um, uh, file code or in this worksheet called job titles and I'll create a named range I'll call it let's say um, experiment <laughs> yeah it doesn't have to be very long um, let's just say experiment I've created a named range called experiment and I want to use this named range um, in another file um, but the, the the file that I'm going to use it um, in is called um, jobs okay so I want to import the title uh, I want to import um, or to look up I want to look up the job title this one here so I compare um, the lookup value in the other table uh, with the job code here and there is a match I retrieve um, the job title okay so um, I go here and I say equal to VLOOKUP so remember don't ask me why I'm using VLOOKUP <laughs> By now you should be an expert um, to decide between H lookup and V lookup. Okay, so V lookup, and then I'm going to select my lookup value, which is B2, comma, and then I'm going to look up my table array. So my table array in this case is going to be the um, it's going to be the file name for um, the file name for the um, for the separate Excel sheet. Okay. So the separate Excel sheet, its file name is supposed to be job titles. So I'll just say job titles uh, dot CSV, it's a CSV file, exclamation mark. And then I'm going to put um, the name of my, um, my name range. Okay. So it was called experiment. Okay. So notice how I've done this one. This is this is the named range, okay, and this is the file where this named range is going to come, uh, come from. In the, if it is in the in the same um, worksheet, you just call the named range as it is. But if it is in a separate uh, worksheet, then you just have to include the name of the file where that worksheet, uh, where that named range is coming from, and you will still have the same access to um, the elements or the cells in the other file as you would when it was in a same um, same place. Okay, so um, so it's called the experiment, and then the column index um, that should be returned. Let's see, the column index is column number two. Um, so we return column number two, and then the um, we return force, which is looking for an exact match. And notice we have been able to retrieve system analyst from a different file, but we've used a named range here. Okay, and you can replicate this. Um, you can replicate this formula. Just go take your case there. Double click here, and it will replicate up to that part. Okay. Notice how this has been done. So th on this part. Um, I will try to make some modification to the mark scheme. Okay, so let's say um, for part C, we are going to say that um, both methods can use um, both methods can use named ranges. Ranges. So we just have to specify the file name when we use the file name and so we specify the file name and the named range 
when we use um, the first method, which is having it um, in separate files, okay? When we use the first method. So that is that is fine. So you're, you're, you're performing an evaluation, okay? So the next thing that you could do, um, okay, so named ranges, named ranges make it um, easy for people to work with files because they do not have to memorize okay um, memorize they do not have to memorize the um, cell references okay so you just need to use so notice like when I used um, experiment I did not have to use absolute a2 to absolute b18 or something like that I just used experiment I didn't have to memorize the range of the, uh, the cells okay um, but the thing is that whether you use um, named range or you do not use um, named range just for this scenario um, it, it is irrelevant okay so for this scenario um, scenario it is pointless to use named ranges or named ranges because we are only replicating the formula or each formula once okay so what this means is that um, whatever um, formula that you use, whether it's in, in you're retrieving something from the faculty uh, file or you're retrieving it from the um, from the um, um, the qualification file, you 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 are only replicating the formula once. You're not using it any other place in the file, so it's pointless. Okay, um, but if you're using it multiple times, maybe the named range you're using it multiple times, then it is. It is good idea to use a named range than to use absolute referencing in that case because you'll be typing the formula every now and then. Okay, so so that with that said, um, um, I think I should have um, I should be done with this one. Um, so both methods can use named ranges. Um, we have absolute references um, for both files, so it's easy to um, to use named ranges. Um, and then the name ranges make it easy for people to work with files because they do not have to memorize um, this um, the cell uh, uh, references. If you had, if you do computer architecture, you, you remember things like um, mnemonics that are used to represent um, um, that are used to represent mat machine representation. Okay, and we say that they I mean it's easy to remember some mnemonics than um, you can remember an hexadecimal or a binary number. Okay, so. Um, I don't know how much time I've used for this one. I, um, a number of you have asked me to explain uh, how you make evaluations and stuff in a number of videos. I don't know. Um, so taking a lot of time here maybe it was meaningful for some of you. Um, okay. So what we're going to do now is to um, is to um, is to go to step number 18 let me see if i can have time to do step number 18 okay so i've used about 28 minutes okay that's a lot of time for one question but it's worth it anyway so the next part of the question says save your word process document as evidence one followed by your center number and candidate uh, number so let's go ahead and save it in our work area so go to file save us and go to browse um, in the location where you have the files um, where you're working on, so save it as evidence one, underscore, followed by your center number, I think, ZM556, underscore, candidate number. Okay. So that is done. The next thing that we're supposed to do is actually go to step 18. I think I'll end with step number 18, and then we'll continue with step um, 19 in the next video, probably. Let's do step 18. It says select only the courses where the code contains letter E and the number 2. Okay, so let's first of all sort this. Uh, um, I mean, to select the courses, the filter and retrieve um, some of these courses. Okay, so go to filter and um, under course code, 
um, you want to use text filter that contains something okay so it should contain the letter e and it should also contain the number two avoid using asterisk um, uh, for um, here don't put asterisk here like this and this one please don't do that okay um, because um, contain the code contain here actually um, encloses or includes those two asterisks. that's what it means actually contains means those two asterisks so when you say contains e then you're saying it's as good as just saying um, the e enclosed in two asterisks okay so I hope that is very clear guys okay I hope that is very clear in this case contains only contains if you use less than or greater than that's a different thing but if you use contains then don't put this, those two uh, things otherwise you're going to get something different okay say okay and notice that you have something that has to do with e and something that has to do with two okay so that should be very fine next we are told to um to sort this data by level in descending order then faculty in ascending order okay level in descending order so level is a field and faculty is a field so the field level we sort it in descending order and the faculty we sort it in ascending order okay so let's go ahead and do just that so you go back to the file under the uh, the feature for sort under data go to sort um, and select what you want to sort so want to sort first of all by level and we are sorting it in descending order then we add another level this other level is called a secondary um, 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 sort field okay the first one is a primary sort field then the second one is a, a secondary um, sort field so um, first of all sort by level then sort by faculty and faculty you sort it by ascending order okay so just verify that you have the fields that are supposed to be sorted um, um, is level and faculty okay then sort them and the information is sorted um, you can verify this <laughs> I don't need to go through that because I know I've done the right thing <laughs> but just in case you go through and verify okay so um, the last part says save um, your spreadsheets as Tawara 2 followed by your center number and candidate number so we're going to save it as Tawara 2 followed by center number and candidate number so go to file then save us and then save as Tawara 2 um, um, and candidate number center number and um, yeah so Tawara 2 um, center number and that okay so that's fine so I earlier on did this part um, in the video that I couldn't record can you imagine <laughs> I actually what happened was I was um, I was trying to record this part of the video so I just came not noticing that my interactive board um, behind me is was off and um, my microphone is actually connected to my interactive board so when I came I was just trying to record and um, not knowing that th when the interactive board is off the microphone is not uh, is actually not functional and so I did all the recording and <laughs> when I wanted to save the video my cam studio told me that I could not save the video because it had no sound I mean yet it was expecting um, some audio of some kind and then it was discarded and that's how I lost out but the file that I was working on which is actually the same file remained and this is why I've just had to replace it okay so um, I think for this video I'm, I'm going to end here so don't forget to subscribe um, to like and comment on my channel and I'll see you in the next video when we're going to start looking at step number 19 and um, let's see how far we can go with the next uh, few steps okay so thank you so much for watching this video